All right, here we go. We're going to start a new unit. Um, we're going to jump off into 8.6 now, which is the student knows that there's a relationship between force, motion, and energy. So we are going to begin with unbalanced forces, 8.6a. Demonstrate and calculate how unbalanced forces change the speed or direction of an object's motion. So we're going to jump into your um, PowerPoint presentations that are in Google Classroom. And we are going to begin with not potential and kinetic energy, but net force. So here we have team one and team two, and you're looking at balanced force right there. The rope is not moving to one side or the other. There is no net force. So um, there is a balanced force. So let's first define force as a push or pull. That's what a force is. There's always forces acting on objects, and these forces can be both balanced or unbalanced. So looking at an apple sitting on a table, if it's not moving, the force is balanced. The, the apple is pushing down with um, in a certain amount of newtons, and the table is pushing up um, with a certain amount of newtons. And then if someone was to apply a un, uh, an unbalanced force to the apple and push it off the table, it would now become an unbalanced force uh, as it's falling and crashing to the ground. But once the, once the apple stops moving on the ground, it, it, it becomes a balanced force again. So let's keep continuing here. When forces are balanced, the forces are equal in size but working in the opposite directions, as you can see with team one and team two. And Oh, think about a piece of wood floating in water. So you have gravity pushing the wood down, but the buoyancy force is keeping the wood afloat. So both forces in these examples are equal and opposite. When forces are balanced, objects will remain motionless or continue at, uh, to move in constant speeds. So objects will remain in motion or at rest until an unbalanced force changes that object's motion or lack thereof. So let's now move on to unbalanced forces. When forces are unbalanced, one or more forces are pushing or pulling harder in the opposite direction. So we have a fourth person that is now pulling on the rope for team two, and the force is greater in this case, so we can see that that net force would be to the right, whatever the, uh, when you subtract the two forces, whatever's left over is in the, in the direction that that force is being pulled or pushed, that would be the net force. So moving on. Unbalanced forces cause objects to accelerate. This means balanced forces, unbalanced forces cause objects to speed up, slow down, or change direction. So now let's look at that vocabulary word for acceleration. L acceleration is defined as speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. It doesn't need to be all three. It can be one of any of those. So that's very interesting. So if you're thinking about something, okay, how would change direction work? Let's say I'm going at 20 miles an hour and I'm taking a corner. Uh, you know, I'm, dr I'm driving a car or riding a bike or whatever, and I'm taking a corner at that speed. I'm accelerating even if I'm taking a corner and my speed doesn't change. I'm accelerating as I slow down to a stop sign. That's usually not how we define it in our language. When you're accelerating, you think speed up, but from a science um, aspect, acceleration is all three, speeding up, slowing down, and changing direction. It's very important that you understand that objects will only speed up, slow down, or change direction when they are acted on by an unbalanced force. 
you have a baseball in your hand, you start to apply a balance force, you reach back and then you throw it forward. That speed of that ball will change the entire time while it's in motion. It will speed up, of course, and then the air friction will slow the ball down. And gravity will act upon that ball bringing it to earth where it hits the ground and begins to come to a stop. So, or if that ball happens to hit somebody in the head, the force of that ball will, the acceleration and the mass of that ball and the force that it was thrown will come in contact with the glove, someone's head, or whatever, and apply a force onto that object. And remember, force is, um, is recorded in Newtons. So to predict how forces will change the motion of an object, we must determine the force acting on the object. So let's take this block here on the left. We have two Newtons to the right plus Two, new, two more newtons to the right. So we have a pushing force on the block and a pulling force. You add those up and the net force would be six newtons to the right. Now let's look at the other picture. We have four newtons being pushed to the right and two newtons being pushed to the left. You subtract those two because they are opposing forces. So it would be the net force would be two newtons to the right. So the picture on the left, you add forces that work together to get find the net force and then you subtract uh, opposing forces to find the net force. Sometimes your net force is zero which would be a balance force and then other times your net force will there will be a net force in a specific direction. So net force is found um, net force equals mass times acceleration. So we use this formula um, to figure out what it is you're looking for. So if you have force equals mass times acceleration, you could take this triangle and, and manipulate it in different ways. If you're trying to find the mass, you divide force by acceleration. If you're trying to find the acceleration, you divide the force by the mass. That's how the triangle works. Top dog goes in the house. So if you're doing your math, you know, you draw your division, you put the force inside in either the acceleration on the mass or the outside, and then you do your division to find, the, you know, the X, whichever one you're looking for. If they give you a force, just know that you put that force in the house and then you do your division. If you're looking for force, you multiply mass and acceleration. That's probably the best way you can um, explain it. But the triangle will always help you figure that out. So imagine F here, M here, A here. They're going to give you two. You have to find the third. You, this is huge, testable, uh, not only on your unit test, but also on the star test. So understand this. Always make sure that you're using the correct units. units. Forces are measured in newtons. Mass is measured in kilograms. And acceleration is me measured in meters per, square, uh, per second squared. So here's some problems here. Practice problems. Go ahead and work these out. Make sure you understand how to set the problem up. If you guys set the problem up, you have a great chance of answering it correctly. If you don't set it up right, that's a big problem. So I'll expect you guys to go through these and make sure you understand them. Do not move on until you understand this. If you need to ask me or, or somebody else, a math teacher, a smart friend, heck, even a dumb friend, you can find some information just by talking it out. So why does mass matter? Mass tells us how much an object will resist a change in motion. Objects with more mass are harder to speed up and slow down. So big truck versus small car. If you apply the same 
acceleration, the small car will speed up faster and it's easier to slow it down versus a big truck. It takes a long time for it to speed up and it takes longer for it to slow down. So you, that is found out mathematically. You take the mass of the object. And you can figure out the force by using by multiplying it by the acceleration. Objects with less mass are easier to speed up and slow down. We're going to do a quick review over potential and kinetic energy. You've already learned all this. Um, remember that potential energy is theoretically like um, described as stored energy. So if you have a bow and arrow and you pull that arrow back, you are increasing the potential energy with the, long, the, the, the farther back you pull that bow. And then you release it and you release the kinetic energy. Energy is the ability to cause a change. Changing location, um, changing the, the state of the matter, changing the size and the shape. Every change takes energy. If you look back on this picture right here with the roller coaster, it's super important. As you are climbing up your, your car, your roller car is gaining potential energy and it's at its highest potential energy at its highest point. So you can see that the potential energy in point A right here is higher than the potential energy in point B. And then it, that potential energy will transfer to kinetic energy. And right about here, right at this point where the car is moving at the fastest, the potential energy will be zero. And then it starts to gain potential energy again and lose kinetic energy. And that's the transfer of energy that happens from potential to kinetic on a roller coaster. So it's really important that you understand the difference between potential energy and kinetic energy. This ball here, you raise the potential energy by, by lifting it higher off the ground. A cat on a fence has a specific amount of potential energy. If you want to increase that potential energy, you stuff that cat full of rats and make it bigger with a bigger mass. And then, of course, it will have greater potential to cause a greater force when it strikes the ground, when it jumps. Or take that cat and put it on the roof. There's two ways to increase the potential energy of that cat on a fence. Batteries also store potential energy. Those batteries can power something. That rubber band on the right can, it, it, you can increase the potential energy by stretching it. That apple, you know, on the, sh on the shelf can be lifted up higher and its potential energy can be increased. And it takes that energy to put it, it takes energy to put an object onto a shelf. And so that's why it's stored energy. That's, how they, that's the reason why it's described that. Chemical potential energy in batteries. Elastic potential, potential energy in rubber bands. Kin kinetic energy is the energy of motion. When things are moving, they have kinetic energy. Just like this robot. And just like the cheetah. When a ball falls off the shelf, its energy is changed into kinetic energy, just like I described with the roller coaster. It's at its highest points with a pendulum at the, um, the highest points of its swing. So it swings this way, and it's at its highest point of potential, and then it starts to go down, and right here it's at its highest point of kinetic as it's moving through and it just switches back and forth. Potential kinetic, potential kinetic, potential kinetic, potential kinetic, just like that. As a, you, can, you can read those, but I just explained it. When one type of energy changes into another, we call it an energy conversion. So you got your potential kinetic review there. I was able to break down the standard of a point 6a, demonstrate and calculate how unbalanced forces change the speed uh, um, or direction of an object's motion. 
And that takes care of 8.6a. We will be moving on 8.6b soon. Talk to you later.